Welcome to the Elevator World News Podcast. This week's featured product is Elevator World's Supervisor's Safety First Package. Proper training and safety practices start with you, the supervisor. Elevator World has put together a package to help you keep safety first. The Supervisor's Safety First Package includes a manager's safety notebook, the seventh edition of Safety Meetings, and the Service Safety in the Elevator Industry DVD. You will also receive a free digital subscription to Elevator World magazine when you purchase the Supervisor's Safety First package. For more information and to order, visit elevatorbooks.com by clicking on the link in the show notes. This is your daily industry news update for May 25, 2017. In today's news, Hitachi sets high goals in Thailand. A factory worker in India has died in an elevator accident. A light tower with an elevator is proposed for Boston's waterfront, and China Information Technology Incorporated has entered a new contract. The Japan Times reported Hitachi's elevator and escalator distributor in Thailand is projecting aggressive sales growth. Michael Tang, vice president of Hitachi Elevator Thailand Company, has taken on a new role as head of its sales and marketing unit. He said the company aims to increase its market share to 25% in 2020. To attain its goal, the company intends annual sales growth of 20% on average and is seeking to sell 1,000 units this year, up 18% from 850 units in 2016. Elevators are expected to account for 70% and escalators for 30% of the 2017 total. Thailand's elevator and escalator market totaled approximately 5,500 units last year and is expected to grow 3-5% to this year, the source stated. Business Standard reported a 27-year-old man died while working in the elevator of a factory in the Narella area of Rohini, India on May 22nd. The victim was found dead in the elevator on the third floor of a plastic factory, according to police, who were called to the scene. Their investigations revealed that the elevator malfunctioned and started moving suddenly when the victim was working and he got stuck. The Boston Herald reported condos, barge-mounted parks, and a light tower with an elevator make up just one of several proposals for redevelopment of Boston's old Charlestown Navy Yard. According to the report, the Boston Planning and Development Agency has received a number of suggested new public uses for sections of the Navy Yard on the Boston waterfront. Other ideas include an urban beach, floating swimming pool barges, an outdoor theater, a climbing wall, and a maritime science and history park. Architects, artists, civic groups, and others have outlined ideas for the property, which housed one of the U.S. Navy's oldest shipbuilding facilities until its closure in 1974. China Information Technology Incorporated, or CNIT, has entered into a contract with Shanghai Langyu Communications Technology Limited, an advertising agency in Shanghai, for the sale of 5,000 CNIT cloud-based elevator advertising terminals to be installed in that city by the end of the year. CNIT said via a press release on Stockhouse that the sale would help generate recurring revenue arising from customers' use of its Yunfa Net system, which permits an advertiser to create reduced cost ads on a PC or mobile app, instantly transmit them to the elevator ad terminals of their choice, and receive feedback on viewers' responses. The contract is expected to make CNIT's combined sales and service revenue exceed $1.5 million U.S. dollars this year as it intends to sell a minimum of 60,000 cloud-based ad terminals which are worth $17.5 million. For more industry-related information, visit elevatorworld.com And be sure to subscribe to our podcast in iTunes or the Google Play Store. 
If you're interested in becoming a sponsor of the Elevator World News Podcast, just let us know by emailing advertising at elevatorworld.com.